Today we'll be talking about the Grand Place, the historic center of Brussels, Belgium. Brussels is the capital not only of Belgium, but the European Union. It's a great travel destination that's convenient to many frequently visited places in Europe. Brussels, in fact, sits at the center of a quadrilateral bounded by London, Paris, Cologne, and Amsterdam. And it's a short train ride from all of those cities. Now, here in the United States, many of our largest cities lack overt focal points, such as those found in European communities. A number of European capitals started out as small villages that grew organically around these focal points over time because public squares were crucial centers of commerce and local politics. This is the case with Brussels, as the Grand Place developed around the markets that congregated in front of the city's ornate town hall. Now, the Grand Place is a good example of a historic town square in a European capital. Local residents seem to use the space as something of a public living room in between events and large gatherings. I think it's worth spending an afternoon at a local restaurant overlooking the square as it gives you insight into the local culture. But it also gives you the chance to observe different types of people coming and going and also admire the city's 15th century capital building at the same time. Now if you're an American and curious about what Brussels has to offer, here's what you need to know about the Grand Place. First, it's important to know that while visitors can show up and take pictures in front of an old building, there's really a lot more to the experience than that. You should think in terms of what you can take away from the visit. You know, if you didn't have a smartphone with a camera, for instance, how would you remember the Grand Place? How would that impact your experience of it? How would you spend an hour there? How did you get there in the first place? How do you think the design influences locations elsewhere? The history and architecture of a place can frequently provide clues around its context and purpose. We Americans, for instance, spend a lot of time in our car-centric environment where we're not around other people and we forget about other people. But we can learn a lot from the past and we can learn a lot from the European tradition and how we use our own public spaces. These are just some of the things you'll want to think about. Now, there are many things to like about the Grand Place. Number one, the location. The Grand Place is located in the geographic center of the city, so it's easy to drop in for a visit from just about anywhere. Number two, the architecture. All of the buildings facing the square feature some of the most impressive Gothic facades in Europe. And number three, the vibe. The Grand Place is, despite its name, actually a chill and comfortable place on most days. Of course, these are my observations, and you may have a different opinion when visiting which is why it's always a good idea to use good judgment and consider your own wishes and desires before traveling. First, let's talk about the location. The Grand Place is located in the geographic center of the city. You're within walking distance of other Brussels attractions, such as the St. Michael and St. Gadula Cathedral. You're also a short distance by subway from other attractions that are farther away, such as the Triumphal Arch. Now, if you're taking the train into Brussels, what I suggest is to wander over to the Grand Place from somewhere else in the city, such as the train station, without selecting any particular route beforehand. And what this will do is this will allow you to explore more of the old town on foot before you reach the Grand Place. From the Brussels South train hub, for instance, I took a 30 minute walk up Boulevard Maurice Le Manier in the direction of the city on foot, passing several fruit vendors along the way. Then, once I reached the Fontaines Park, I began making my way through the medieval streets of Brussels. And this is where you really start to see the historic, char historic character of Belgium. Many of the streets in this section are pedestrian only, and the buildings are very small and very old. And from here, I made my way further north, passing the Belgian Opera House, until I reached the Rue Neuve downtown, which is the central shopping street of Brussels. This is where you can find a lot of stores with American brands. Now, one thing you'll need to do while on the Rue Neuve is grab a gourmet Belgian waffle. As everyone knows, waffles are closely associated with Belgium, but what people don't tell you is that they're actually very good, or at least they were at the place I went to. Initially, I was thinking I'd be served you know, something along the lines of a gas station type of waffle, but as it turns out, they had it made to order, piping hot and everything, so it was very good. And once I finished my waffle on the Runev, I turned back south and went back through the winding medieval streets in the direction of St. Nicholas Church, located just to the east of the Brussels Stock Exchange. And then there, a few doors east of the church, past the chocolate shops, there it is, the Grand Place. This brings us to the second thing I like about the Grand Place, the architecture. The Grand Place feels like, well, a Grand Place. 
All the buildings have impressive Gothic facades facing the square, and many buildings on the square are decorated with gold accents. This gives the plaza a feeling of importance. It's something for Brussels residents to feel proud of. Now, there are two particularly distinctive buildings on the plaza. The first is the Brussels Town Hall. This is the largest building that takes up much of the plaza's southern face. Now, it was constructed in the 15th century, and it has endured over 700 years of wars, fires, and other dramatic events. And not only that, it was the tallest building in Brussels for years until the construction of modern skyscrapers starting in the 1960s. Now, the structure of the Brussels Town Hall is very interesting for architecture fans because it has both an asymmetrical floor plan and an asymmetrical facade. What that means is it's off-center in terms of the external appearance of the building and the floor plan as well. These design nuances are probably the result of the building being constructed in phases so many years ago. The tower, for instance, is off-center from the middle of the building, a little bit closer to the right, and the walkway that goes through it is off-center from the tower. Then the facade on the left side of the tower, which has square windows, is slightly higher than the facade on the east side, which has arched windows. And then the arches on the windows um, on the ground level are of differing widths on both sides of the tower. So the Brussels Town Square is almost like an OCD nightmare, or a dream, depending on your point of view. Now at the bottom of the tower, there is a set of very heavy doors that lead to a courtyard in the middle. Keep in mind, we're still talking about the Brussels Town Square. At the center of this courtyard lies a collection of cobblestones in the shape of a giant star, which is meant to symbolize the center of Brussels itself. So when you're standing on the star in the middle of the courtyard, you're basically standing in the center of Brussels. And from this perspective, the Grand Place is very symbolic of the city of Brussels as well. Now, directly opposite the town hall, you have the Brussels City Museum, which was constructed in the 16th century as a residence for the then King of Spain. This building, also in the Gothic style, not only survived the same wars and fires as the town hall in the 17th century, but was repurposed with a variety of uses in the 19th century. At different points, this building was used as a prison, a junkyard, a library, a courtroom, and even a dance studio at one point. Finally, in the late 19th century, the building was restored by the city of Brussels and designated as a museum, and it continues to serve in that capacity today. Both the museum and town hall have interesting histories on the Grand Place. And finally, the third thing to like about the Grand Place is the vibe. I just like the atmosphere. You know, you have to wind through many small streets to get there, which gives you the opportunity to see a lot of things. During my visit, in fact, I saw an entire folk band of Belgian street performers walking down the alleys, just playing tuba, accordion, and trumpet in the middle of the day for passersby. And, you know, it makes you want to stop and take everything in. People in modern times, you know, we often find ourselves busier than we'd like to be due to work, family, and other obligations. But the Grand Place is a good setting where you can just sit and enjoy the vibe and observe. You know, everything is relative. Think about it like this, you know, you're on a holiday in another country, but 20 feet away from you, there's a guy unloading a delivery truck. Maybe he grew up in Belgium, maybe he didn't, but he lives in a small town half an hour away, and he's been to the Grand Place probably about a thousand times. Then you look to the other side of the plaza, where you might witness a group of college students being lectured to by their professor. Several doors away from that, you might have an elderly woman asking for change in front of a chocolate shop that caters to wealthy American tourists. Five minutes later, you might hear another truck dropping off barricades for an event on the plaza in the near future. And then not too far away from that, you know, you might hear police sirens as they respond to a call nearby. Meanwhile, while you're still in the plaza, you look over to your left and you notice random cats running down one of the alleys leading away from the plaza with a pair of kids chasing them. And then at the center of the plaza, you have two young women taking selfies with the town hall behind them. Another woman is watering plants outside her store. A group of tourists from the United States are deciding where they want to eat lunch. And then there's a gentleman sitting on the steps of a nearby building doing the exact same thing that you're doing, which is observing everything going on. So, Really, you have an entire tapestry of life at the Grand Place, which is probably the coolest thing about it. 
sometimes it's good to just vibe somewhere new because that process of observation shows you that people are fundamentally the same at the end of the day, no matter where you are in the world. You know, we take for granted how relatively mundane and safe everyday life is now compared to the past. But it's good to look to the past sometimes as history can reveal clues about the future. So that's the grand place in Brussels, Belgium. It's a good place to visit for the history, the buildings, the vibe, and its centrality. I can only recommend. In fact, the grand place is a good attraction to visit at any time of the year. I'm told they have a good Christmas market on the Grand Place, actually. That might be interesting to check out in the future myself. But for now, if you're considering a trip to Belgium, just try to learn a little bit about the Grand Place and, you know, go check it out. Just see what it's like. Have a good time while you're there as well. And of course, travelers always appreciate a good travel tip. So if you've been to the Grand Place or something similar, do let us know. It's good to hear about other people's experiences as it gives us the chance to look at the places we visited in a different light and hopefully learn something new. Safe travels.